Well, hello. It is a snowy day outside, and I am getting ready to make some collage art from a few issues of Dwell magazine. It's interior design. And as always, I am collaging in my everything book, which I flipped through recently. Make sure you check that out. And I did have a little bit of an idea what I wanted to do when I started this collage. I had a slight concept in mind, but uh, but I went through this first pile of clippings that I did from like a preliminary harvest and I just kind of started pulling items that I thought would match and that appealed to me. Um, I was being very loose with it, but I knew overall the message that I was looking to get across with this collage, if that makes sense. You'll see what I'm talking about. So the first step was just to go through this pile of pages and pieces and just see what I thought would work. Um, I really wanted to use this jumping person and uh, that was like right away I was like yes I want to use this and honestly usually I would have used that whole page but instead I got a little gutsy and I almost threw away the pool but I cut it out instead and I'm so happy I did. Dwell is actually a really interesting magazine. I I don't usually go for interior design magazines, but my wonderful friend Robin picked up a bunch of issues of this uh, magazine for me, and I'm so glad I took them because there are some really fun finds in here. So now that we have the pieces that we want to work with, I am looking for the next blank page. I did, like I said, recently flip through this journal, but I have done more even since then, so I'll be sure to show you that soon. Uh, so the next step is laying out the two pages. So this is always a bit of a tricky process because I don't glue anything down yet, so it's just about like laying it out and making sure that the layers <laughs> don't move. And depending on the size of your pieces that you're layering, that can be really, really tricky because if your hand like knocks something that it's not supposed to knock you have to start all over again but uh, I'm, I'm used to it at this point i loved this pattern with these cubes uh, so i cut along the edge which was really cool and i end up using a little more of that in the end you'll see So that was the first page pretty much sorted, and then it was time to move on to the second page on the right side. Uh, like I said, I knew I wanted the jumping person, and I wanted the pool, and I had this uh, page that had like a crazy amount of green and foliage, so I wanted to see if I could layer that to make it look like it's kind of like the pool surrounded by a jungle. And uh, I don't know, you can tell me if you think I was successful. Uh, this beat, this piece on the wall of this like wooden pattern just kind of gave it a nice edge that I liked. It's always tricky to know for me whether I should cut a straight edge or if I should rip. Um, like here I am cutting the edge that's gonna be along the outside, but I am leaving it ripped along the inside and honestly, looking back at it, I wish I had sculpted that piece a little more. Uh, I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. But I kind of wish I had cut a little bit more of a defined edge there. Um, the end result, though, it is effective. But uh, yeah, so I'm just picking some small pieces of foliage to fill in all of those white spaces. And yeah, just filling out the space. And now I'm cutting some stuff to go over the straight edges of the pool uh, because I didn't want the pool to stand out too much. I wanted it to like be enveloped in that green environment. I cut another 
another little edge here to cover that last straight edge of the pool. And I was pretty happy with this. I think this is the finished result and the two pages are pretty much laid out. I did another little trim and I did not cut straight. I, <laughs> I learned the lesson that you should use a paper cutter, uh, but it's okay. So now I put those pieces to the side and I moved over this side so I could glue down that uh, page one layer at a time. Now I say glue down, I do not use glue. I use something called mounting, photo mounting squares. I talk about these a lot. I pretty much exclusively use these when I'm doing collage. They are probably not the most like, uh, I don't know, like the most efficient way to adhere things, but they're just my go-to. You can rip them into small pieces. You can uh, move them around pretty easily depending on the type of magazine. They're just my favorite, favorite, favorite adhesive. I have them linked below if you want to check them out. I usually get them from Michaels, but Scotch also makes a brand of them and there's a few different kinds. You just have to make sure that it says permanent when you get them because sometimes they can be, if it says repositionable, they will not stick as well. So I always go for permanent. But this was a pretty easy side on the left. Not too many layers and just a few bigger pieces to get down. But overall, it was definitely easier than the right side, which took a lot more layering. I connected their eyeball. I don't know if you can see that, but I tried to make it look like their like one eyeball was like connected. <laughs> I don't know. And I did not like that. I, I didn't place that quite correctly. So that straight edge of this, the, uh, the piece with the cubes is like off center with the other ripped edge and it was bothering me. So I tried to rip a little bit to cover it up. I don't totally love how it turned out, but I think it's like good enough. If I were to do it again, I would probably cut along the cubes like I did on the bottom um, but it's okay that color is just really really cool and really stands out so with that last piece to cover the little bit on top and make it all seamless then it was time to do the right side and like I said a lot of layering a lot of little movements here so it definitely took a second <laughs> So once it's layered and it's laid out like that, you kind of have to find what is the bottom layer that is touching the paper first. Um, that can be really hard. And depending on the collage, sometimes layers can get really, really tricky. But I found that like if I find the bottom layer that is touching the paper and I just glue down like one side of it at a time and then like that kind of helps with see how like the bush has to go on top of the blue so I glued down part of each so that it wouldn't move and then it's a little fiddly but um, you get used to it after a while I laid this big piece down a little too quick and it ended up being super crooked. So I had to peel it up to stick it again. That's always very, very precarious because you never know if the magazine is gonna rip or not. I did get lucky this time, but I try to be really, really careful if I have to rip up a layer to move it. 
Um, I have had nightmares before where I've lost whole pieces of things and stuff, and uh, especially with magazine, because these pieces are one of a kind. I didn't print them, I found them. So it's like, uh, it could be a little scary, but uh, as long as you move slowly when you're like ripping something up, um, it usually will turn out okay. <laughs> And then uh, this is just the part of covering those straight edges of the pool to make it look a little more jungly. And a little tiny piece in the top left will come to just cover up the little corner you can see of that blue piece. I just wanted it to be like totally seamless. That like wall of succulents, that like garden wall I found was such a blessing because those really uh, blend together so well. So these were the final two pages and the next thing that I wanted to do was add some le letters. I found all these letters in those issues of Dwell magazine. Of course, you might know from just watching my stuff that I have just an absurd amount of lettering. Um, I am selling a few letter sets on my Etsy shop. Check it out at the link in the description. But I just have so many letters and I can never get enough. So I tend to look for new ones instead of using what I have. But uh, so I did just go hunting and find the letters I needed for these. Uh, I went kind of colorful. I didn't want to do just black on white, which I do sometimes. Um, I might make a few black on white letter kits for my Etsy shop. Let me know if you have any interest in that. But I wanted to put a two line quote on these pages with one line on each page that just says what is meant for me will find me and I don't know if anyone can relate but sometimes I get a lot of FOMO I you know I social media is so much about comparing yourself to other people and you know sometimes I really feel like I'm behind I feel like I work so hard on my stuff and it just doesn't come together and those opportunities don't show up and it's like you don't really know what to do to get them. It's like, it can be really stressful, but I always try to tell myself that like, what is meant for me will show up. It will find me. So if I don't get a certain opportunity or something, it's because it's not it's not the right one it's not time yet and when it is time it will happen and I just have to stay open and ready for it it's it's a thought that helps me a lot so uh, it's something that's really been on my mind lately and it's something I've really been telling myself lately so I just wanted to make two pages in my journal that say those words uh, so I could look back on it and I think the images kind of tell a story in a way you know there's the subway path track on the left which is like being on the right track and something something aging maybe from the faces in the top corner I don't know um, and just taking taking a blind leap like the guy on the right <laughs> I don't know maybe that's a little cheesy but it's just where my head was at when I made this I just want to know and remind myself that the right opportunities will show up when it's the right time, you know? And that is it. Here is a little close-up of the two pages in my everything book. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this snow day and watching this collage come to life. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!